Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ezraautomation.com and welcome to another video for Ezra Automation EA weekend video series. And in this video, we are going to talk about installing and getting started with all new WSL2 or otherwise called as Windows Subsystem for Linux. And in this video, we can talk about and complete overview of Windows Subsystem for Linux installation and getting started. So if you ask me, what is this Windows Subsystem for Linux? Well, the Windows Subsystem for Linux lets developer run GNU or Linux based environment, including most command line tools, utilities and applications directly on Windows unmodified without the overhead of virtual machine. And Windows Subsystem for Linux released a couple of years before and is getting very, very popular because Microsoft has released an all new Windows Subsystem for Linux 2 on their Windows 2004 build of May update released a couple of weeks before. And WSL2 is a new version of the architecture in WSL that changes how Linux distributions interact with Windows. And WSL2 has a primary goal of increasing file system performance and adding system call compatibility, which is the most important change that WSL2 has brought within this version of WSL. So if you see a quick comparison of WSL2 versus WSL1 or simply WSL, the WSL2 uses the latest and the greatest in virtualization technology to run a Linux kernel inside of a lightweight utility virtual machine However, WSL is not a traditional VM experience, but we can still call it as a, a VM. And you can see that the major difference between WSL1 and WSL2 is this. You can see that the managed VM of WSL2 is available within Windows operating system or the host operating system, which is pretty cool, which you cannot really do in WSL1. And WSL2 is a full kernel baked within, which is also one of the most important change that Microsoft has brought this time or May update release. And it has a full system call compatibility as I told you before. So those are something which is pretty impressive. And you can see that there are two cross over here for WSL2. Actually, those are coming pretty soon and Microsoft team are already working on bringing those support for VMware and VirtualBox, also across the performance of the OS file system, which is coming pretty soon because those are already supported in WSL1 and there is no reason why it is not supported in WSL2. So those changes are also coming to WSL2 pretty quickly. And the major improvement in WSL2 versus WSL1, and this is something which I feel as a pitching point for me to go for WSL2 because as an automation test engineer, I really need to see where I can really bring the WSL2 to be used for my everyday work on automation testing. So the first and the foremost important thing which I really like about WSL2 is this. Docker can now run within WSL2, which is within Linux context as opposed to Windows context in WSL1. This is the most important thing which I think has really induced me to even create this particular video. And then, since Docker for Windows is not going to use the Hyper-V, even the computers running in Windows Home Edition can run Docker using WSL2. This is another most important thing because I really have only one license for my machine on Windows 10 Professional version and other machine that I have is running the Windows Home Edition but you can see that this time, because Hyper-V is not required for Docker for Windows to run, because all these days, if you install Docker for Windows on the home edition of Windows, it won't run basically. But this time you can actually run. The reason being Docker for Windows is not restricted to use Hyper-V to store the Linux kernel. Rather, it directly talks with the WSL2 kernel to run Docker within it, which is the most awesome thing. And finally, the faster I.O. performance is available in WSL2 since WSL2 uses VHD of Windows to store Linux subsystem and the performance is much, much faster. You can literally see how fast it is when it downloads some of the packages from online and how it extracts and how it installs those applications within the WSL itself. Well, as I said, the installation part of WSL2 is very, very straightforward if you have a Windows 10 machine. It can be a home edition or a professional edition, but I'm going to quickly show you on the professional edition of Windows 10 in this demo. But once again, as I told you, make sure that you are running Windows 10 latest version, which is updated to 
version 2004 build 19041 or higher if not you cannot really run wsl2 within your windows machine so you need to go to the windows features and updates and then you need to install the windows subsystem for linux over there and then any linux distro that you have and then you can hook the docker for windows to choose that particular binary of wsl and then you can see that the docker will be running in the context of the linux distro which you have installed in wsl rather the windows context itself so i'm going to quickly show you all these details in my present machine that you are seeing over here which is running wsl1 and then we'll quickly install wsl2 and i will show the difference between both of them all right so this is my machine that i usually use for all my recordings and all my testing stuff that you have seen all my videos these days so this is the windows 10 operating system that i have and this is running WSL1. So in order to check that, if I just put WSL and if I hit enter, you can see that I am actually running inside the WSL and I can type this particular command and you can see that I can get the version of operating system which I'm running, which is Windows 10 and the build is 18363. So it's not basically the latest version that I'm currently running and it is not WSL do as well so the system setup that i have right now is i already have the docker for windows running within my machine over here as you can see there and if i try to and if i try to just type like docker uh, ps hyphen a or something like that you can see that it will tell me that the command docker could not be found in wsl1 distro we recommend to convert this distro to wsl2 and activate the wsl integration in docker desktop settings so it basically tells me that I need to be on WSL2 to basically run this particular command. So you cannot directly install Docker within the WSL1. You can do some cheats. I have seen online there are some articles and blog posts of how you can install Docker within WSL. But we're not going to really discuss about all these details this time. But those are actually available out of the box in WSL2 and you can actually access wsl distro and if you type something like explorer.exe of dot you can see that it shows me an explorer of this particular machine that i have got so basically this is my current windows host machine it is showing over here because it has mounted my c colony user of karthik over here so let's say if i try to go to the root directory and now if i just type the explorer.exe of dart you can see that it couldn't take me into wsl dollar of ubuntu so basically it shows me the distribution of linux operating system that currently i am running within my machine which is an ubuntu operating system running on the top of wsl but again guys you need to have this ubuntu or red hat distro installed within your machine if not you cannot really see that but i'm going to quickly show you all this installation of wsl2 in my different machine that i currently have which has the latest version of windows may update and we can quickly see how it can be done so this is my physical machine which is currently running in my other hardware so i'm just going to connect that particular machine and in this machine i will quickly show you how we can install wsl2 and how we can install docker for windows and how we can integrate the docker for windows on the wsl2 and then how we can run a simple docker command and we'll see how we can basically pull a docker image and run a docker image on that so in order to do that i'm just going to go to the windows features and updates so before that i can also show you uh, what is the system version of my windows so if you go to the explorer and go to the file and go to the help and about windows you can see that it shows you the version is 2004 and the OS build is 19,041. So this is the build which actually has the Windows subsystem for Linux 2 version. So I'm just gonna go to the features and updates. And over here, I'm just gonna enable the Windows subsystem for Linux within this particular machine so that you can see the WSL2 will be available. So the installation part is gonna restart my machine because that's gonna make a whole lot of change within my operating system. So I'm just gonna restart the machine. And we'll see how the machine is going to look like once the restarting is done. Hopefully WSL2 would have installed in this machine. So I'm just going to open the Windows terminal over here in this machine. And if I type WSL, well, before doing that, what I have did is even before actually enabling the WSL, 
I tried WSL2 myself within this machine. So what I did is the part of WSL, we also need to install the Linux distro within this machine as I told you. So there are many different distros of Linux available on the Windows stores. So if you just go to the uh, stores over here, and then if you just search for any Linux distro, let's say Ubuntu for that matter, which is kind of very popular. So if you go and search this one, you can see that it shows you the Ubuntu operating system for you. And I have already installed and that's the reason you can see that it just got an update and the product has been installed for me, which is pretty cool. And also, since I have installed the WSL2 within this machine this time, I can directly launch the Ubuntu operating system if I just hit this one. You can see that it shows me a command prompt with Ubuntu operating system over here. And now if I try to verify the version of the Ubuntu which is currently running using this command, you can see that the Linux distro which I'm currently running is version 20.4 and it is an LTS version. So this is exactly the same version that I have installed from over here. So, so you can see that the full version of Linux is currently up and running within my machine. And the next thing which we're gonna do is installing the Docker for Windows within this machine. And we'll see how we can connect the Docker for Windows within WSL2 and we'll see how we can access the images directly from WSL2 more like how we can access that from the Windows host itself. So for doing that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to download the Docker for Windows which I have already did and it's already available within my downloads so I'm just going to install that. And once I start the installation you can see that it tells me that do you enable the WSL2 Windows feature and add the shortcut to desktop. So this is a new one which is currently being added. So it tells you that you need to enable the WSL2 Windows feature. And again, I'm just gonna uncheck this for now because I'll quickly show you how we can do that manually once the installation is done. And also before I forget, before we start using the Docker for Windows, we can quickly see how the one which I have this machine without WSL2, how the Docker for Windows manages the virtual machines within this machine. So as I told you, this Docker actually uses the Hyper-V of my machine. If I go to the Hyper-V, you can see that the Docker desktop VM is currently run running within the Hyper-V manager, which means this is a Docker virtual machine which is running within the Hyper-V hypervisor. You can also try to configure your VMware hypervisor with Docker, but again, that's not something we are gonna talk about this time, but, but by default, Docker for Windows uses the hypervisor Hyper-V to actually store the virtual machine over here. So you can see that basically this is running on this machine. But if I go back to this machine, the one which I have WSL2, and if I open the hypervisor over here, the Hyper-V manager, you can see that it has no Docker for Windows VM, and it will not be available even further. The reason being we are not gonna use the Windows host basically, rather we are gonna use the Linux kernel of WSL2. And that's the reason you can actually use Docker for Windows on the Windows Home Edition as well. All right, the installation of the Docker for desktop is now done. So I'm just gonna hit close. And I guess the Docker for Windows is not up and running right now. So I'm just gonna run the Docker desktop right now. So you can see that it is now running the Docker for Windows over here. And it says that the Linux container WSL2 backed is starting up. So basically, it has, I don't know, for some reason, maybe because I have installed before, it is automatically taking the WSL2 backend for the Docker this time, even though I told Docker desktop to not use WSL2 or use WSL2 by default, but somehow it is taking, I don't know for what reason it is. So I'm just gonna skip the tutorial over here. And if I go to the settings of the Docker, you can see that there is this checkbox, which is a new one. It says that use the WSL2 based engine. So this is a new feature, which it tells you that you are gonna use the WSL2 as the context to store all your images and run the container, rather the Windows host do all those stuff. And it also tells you that the WSL2 provides a better performance than the legacy Hyper-V backend. So as I told you, that's the reason. And there is one more thing that you need to do in order to use the Ubuntu distro is you need to go to the resources and there is something called as WSL integration. So once you select this WSL integration, you can see that there is this option called refresh. So once you do this refresh, it will basically show you the Ubuntu distro, but it also tells you an information here that you don't have any WSL2 distro, please convert a WSL1 distro 
to WSL2 and then install the new distro and it will appear in here. So what does that mean? Basically, you need to go to the command prompt over here, WSL-L-V, which tells you all the versions of distros that you have installed. And you can see that it tells you that you have installed Ubuntu and it is running and the version is just one. So basically it tells you that this version that you have currently is not running the WSL2 version. So basically you need to run that in WSL2. So in order to do that, you need to run this command, WSL hyphen hyphen set version Ubuntu to the version that you need to run, which is nothing but Ubuntu to version number two. So once you do that, it will take a conversion process where it is gonna convert the current version of WSL supported binary to version two, and it takes a few minutes, and then we can see what magics can happen. And while this is happening, we can see the hypervisor right now. You can still see that there is no Docker VM currently running within my Hyper-V manager, which is pretty cool. And also, I'm just gonna go to my Ubuntu operating system over here. You can see that it is currently exiting. The reason being, we are currently converting our Ubuntu operating system to WSL2. That's why you can see that this is currently being exited. But once the conversion is done, I'll also quickly show you if whether the Docker is available over here. All right, it shows that the conversion is currently done, which is pretty cool. And now if I just check the version which is running in the WSL, and you can see that current version is actually version number two. And it says that the, the state of the Ubuntu is currently stopped. So I can probably quit this. And if I just type WSL over here, you can see that it is currently running. I don't know for what reason it is showing me as stopped. I can exit this and let's do clear. And now if I just type, you can see that the Ubuntu is currently in running state. Let me get into the WSL or using any distro that I have, which is nothing but the Ubuntu distro that I have currently installed. So I'm just gonna go over here using the terminal. As you can see, we can go from here as well using this particular shortcut. And then if I type Docker over here, you can see that it shows me the Docker command without any problem. The reason being the Docker for Windows is smart enough that it has already taken the WSL2 engine over here, which is pretty cool. And at the same time, as I told you, if I go to the resources and the WSL integration, you can see that it will also show you the enabled integration with additional dist distros option, which is nothing but the Ubuntu operating system over here. So if I select this, then what happens is you can access all the images and the running process from within the Linux distro as like how you can do from the Windows distro. And if I just go to the Windows machine over here and if I just put Docker, oops, I don't know for what reason it is showing like that. I guess this is some bug with the terminal because if I just type PowerShell because the Docker for Windows is already installed for some reason, it's not been refreshed within the Windows terminal over here. So if I just do a Docker and if I hit enter, you can see that I can see the command uh, executing, but it is not coming over here in this particular terminal. Maybe I need to refresh this particular terminal so that it shows me. But yeah, that's the idea. So you can see all the images that you can download on the Windows machine in the Linux operating system as well. So I'm just gonna go and pull one of the images that I have already created within my Docker account. So this is my registry, which, which is already available over here, which is the Exit Automation registry. And it has few images, which is sitting on this particular repository, which is the Jenkins Docker image master and the Jenkins agent. So I'm just gonna get the one with the Jenkins master without Docker. So there is a reason for that, which I can probably tell, talk in other courses, but yeah, this is one of the images that I have got. So this is the uh, Docker pull command. So I can just copy and I can just go over here. And maybe if I try to close this particular command terminal, and if I open the terminal once again, and if I just do docker pull, and the tag is without docker, and if I hit enter, you can see that it is gonna pull the docker image from for me from my registry, which is available on my account of the hub.docker.com. Again, it is public. You can also get this by yourself. 
it is not my private repository or something you can also do it for yourself for your testing of the Jenkins CI CD pipeline all right now the image has been downloaded over here within my machine and now if I just type to do docker images over here you can see that it shows me an image that I have actually pulled from the hub doc docker .com, which is pretty cool and now if I do the exact same thing on my Ubuntu operating system on the WSL which is currently running over here and if I just do you saw that the docker command if I typed and if I hit enter it was working fine but if I do the exact same thing with docker of the images something like that you can see that I actually get an error here it says that cannot connect to the docker daemon at unix colon this particular docker.sock is the docker daemon running so basically the docker d is currently not running so what is this docker d is nothing but the docker daemon which has to be installed along with the docker which is going to be something which is installed along with the docker for windows for you but over here within the ubuntu operating system that i have got the docker daemon is currently missing so the docker daemon is a self-sufficient runtime for the containers so basically you can do the docker command but the docker daemon is a separate installation which has to be done as a separate installation earlier while the docker was released even for windows but then with docker for windows came in as a separate installation it had all those installation for you automatically and that's the reason i could able to do the docker images and stuff so everything is working for me in windows machine but not in my wsl so in order for that to be done that's the reason you can see we have this enabled integration with additional distros option available on the docker for windows so once i select this one and once i hit apply and restart and now if I just try to do the Docker images, you can see that I could able to see the Docker images this time. So this has basically integrated the daemon for me or the Docker D for me within the distros over here from the Docker for Windows as well, which is pretty impressive and which is pretty cool. And these are some of the coolest thing that we can get with WSL out of the box. And one more thing that we can actually get is we can actually get into the Linux distro and if I just do ls or maybe if I just go to slash of var something like that and I can also open the Visual Studio code from here pretty much like how I can able to do that in WSL and all the IO operations are so faster this time and that's the reason you can see that all the changes that you can make over here are going to be real time and they are going to be updated while you develop an application with WSL2 something like a Node.js app or any app which is running within the container of Ubuntu you can directly make the changes as if you are doing within a Windows operating system and those changes are going to be reflected directly real time on WSL2 and then you can see all the access happening for you automatically which is all pretty cool so these are some of the greatest and super cool things which are available in WSL2 which is released with Windows 2004 update or the May update and you can try out yourself and see how it works for you so once again thank you very much for watching this video and you have a great day with the latest update of Windows 10 thank you